Hey guys, how are you all doing? Hope you're keeping safe and well and safe indoors. This is what this video is going to be about. The fact that you can't go out, you're probably not able to use your car. So what do you do with your car? Before I get into that, make sure you are subscribing to this channel. I think there's a logo there. If you hover over that, you can subscribe or scroll up and subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification button, that little bell icon. Meanwhile, also follow me on all social media. Search for hashtag brown car guy, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the rest of it, and browncarguy.com. Okay, so I had a couple of questions about this. So I thought I'll put together a video based on this, based on information that I've actually got from a good buddy of mine, Richard Weinberg. So shout out to him. He's based in Dubai, works in the car industry, and also I uh, use the sources such as the RACA and Goodwood Circuit also put out some information on what to do with your car during this uh, lockdown, how to look after it basically. So the first thing to say though is don't ignore, I mean, you know, this is, I'm recording this in the UK. We're uh, coming into the third week of our so-called lockdown here it's it's 7th of april it's about 4:30 um, and around the world, a quarter of the world is in lockdown, but there are different rules in different places. I think in some places you need permission to even go outside. So uh, all of this is subject to making sure that you're not breaking any laws, any rules, and not the spirit of the whole thing about, you know, hashtag stay at home, uh, save lives. This is very, very important. But given what you can do from the instruction that I'll give you, uh, like I said, essential journeys only is what is being told uh, that we are being allowed to do. And they're saying that basically uh, keep as few people as possible in the car, only members of your household, nobody else. So only take the car to go shopping or essential work only, and that's it. Um, uh, shorter distance you're driving because you know go more than a few minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Uh, that could be an issue with older cars. If you have an older car, say 10, 15 plus years old car, that could be an issue. Newer cars is not uh, that much of an issue, but newer cars have other problems, which I'll get into. Now, first of all, where are you gonna store the car? Where are you keeping it? If you're keeping it on the road, make sure it's safe and secure at the very least get one of those steering lock things. I'm going to mention a few things that you might need to get and you'll be like, well, I can't go out and get them. But all of the things that I'm mentioning uh, here are either things you'll have in your home or stuff that you can order online, particularly from free plug Amazon, for example, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, if you're on the, if you're parking it on the road, make sure you close all the windows and locked everything, close the sunroof so it's secure. If you're lucky enough to have a garage, then within the garage, if it's a closed lock garage, you might wanna leave the windows a crack open a little bit and the sunroof a little bit open because that allows the air to circulate so the air doesn't go stale and it doesn't allow bacteria to, to basically have a party inside your car whilst it's all sealed up uh, in stale air. Now, the biggest issue with cars, of course, is batteries. Uh, when your car is left unused, the battery gets drained and this is especially true for newer cars because they're using the battery all the time even when you're not running them there's all systems and stuff on the car that are basically draining the battery um, so older cars you could leave them for weeks sometimes months newer cars like 10 days sometimes that's it and that's the maximum you can do and then you're in trouble now again if you have a garage uh, what you could do is buy something like a trickle charger tons of those available online and you can plug that into a socket and that will keep your battery charged uh, try to get one that automatically shuts off when the battery is at a decent charge so it doesn't keep draining your uh, electricity uh, or you can get one of these devices that you can either attach to the battery and it just gives you an indicator of the health of the battery or you can plug it in i think to your um, your socket in the car and again it tells you the state of the battery so you don't need to do anything until you know that the battery is going down but make sure you check that uh, regularly um, so uh, uh, now, if, if you can't plug it in because you're on the road or whatever, then of course um, you need to run the car. Now, if you're doing essential journeys, that's fine. That should be enough to keep the battery going. If, you have more than, if you're blessed to have more than one car, then alternate between the cars so that you're using them occasionally each time so that, they have, um, uh, so that you're, 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 you're spreading the use between them and keeping them running. Now, if you can't do that, if you've got one car, you can't take it on a journey. Start it at least once every two weeks, uh, at least, maybe more, but at least once every two weeks uh, to prevent the battery going flat and also to keep the engine lubricated. If you're in the garage then and you do that, then make sure you've opened the garage door because of course exhaust fumes are toxic and uh, yeah, you don't want to be in there. You gotta run the car for about five to 15 minutes. Take it, again, if you can take it around the block, take it for a short drive, that's good because you get everything running, all the fluids going and all the wheels and everything moving, that's a good thing. Again, don't break any rules. Um, even if you could just move back and forth, if you've got space to do that, then even that would be good. It's good for the tires, I'll get into the tires in a minute. Um, if you can't even do that, then whilst you're just sitting still, uh, put it into all of the gears. If it's a manual, keep the clutch down and do it. If it's an automatic, keep your foot on the brake, but just put it into the different gears um, so that it does that. Well, turn on and 
systems, the lights, all the car systems in the car, even the stereo, just like a minute and then turn it back off again. Particularly the heating, turn that full on for a couple of minutes and again, uh, turn the AC, turn that off and then turn the AC on for full two minutes if you have it on your car. Well, of course, whilst you're doing that, open the windows again, let the air circulate uh, in the car, uh, keep some in and out of that. Uh, whilst you're doing that, make sure to check the dashboard for uh, the gauges are all at the right levels and make sure there's no warning lights. Of course, you may not be able to do anything about the warning lights if you do have them, but at least you become aware of them. Maybe you won't be able to use the car for the duration, but you'd better to know now than later on if you need it in an emergency. Um, so once you turn the car off, the car off, make sure you've turned everything off so that once so the car isn't in any way draining, particularly lights and stuff, or put the lights on automatic if you have that facility, um, so that they, it's not draining the battery in, in any way, and also so that the next time you turn it on, nothing everything just starts up again. So just switch everything off before you turn the car off. Now, back to the tires, I said I was going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, if possible, uh, and if you're putting the car away for a while, then inflate them to the maximum setting. Usually it says on the sidewall or the manual what you can uh, you can inflate them to because you know you they will lose air pressure over time. Also, if they're inflated maximum, there's less contact space with the ground, which avoids flat spots on the tires. You don't want that. And again, rolling the car back and forth or just rolling it into a different position will also avoid doing that. And also the fact that the tires are fully it makes it actually easier to roll that car it's just easier to do it um, also another thing that the reason that makes it easier to do it is keeping the handbrake off which is what you should do now I know in modern cars you can't because they're often electronic uh, parking brakes e-brakes or whatever or little buttons so again just turning the car on make sure you turn the handbrake off whilst you're doing that the reason being because handbrake sometimes can seize on so if you can leave the handbrake off leave it off if you're worried about the car rolling if it's a manual car leave it in gear when it's off and if it's an automatic it's in park so it'll stay in this place anyway if you're still worried you could use chocks around the wheels uh, around the tires to hold it in place again you can order those online um, so uh, another tip is the fuel tank again if you're putting the car away for a while and if you're capable or able to do so then fill up the tank that prevents moisture from accumulating in the tank and that prevents uh, corrosion, believe it or not. That can happen, and also believe it or not, fuel can actually go off. Both petrol and diesel, after a year, can actually go off. Hopefully this thing isn't gonna last for a year, but it's just, uh, you can actually uh, add a, a fuel stabilizer to extend its life if you've got a classic or something that you are putting away for a long time, but it's another reason to do that. If fuel is in a sealed container, it's fine. It's when it's exposed to air that it can start to go off. Um, now, you could put a cover uh, on the car, uh, especially if you're parking it outside and if it's under a tree, because you get bird droppings and tree sap and harsh environment uh, but if you or you could just wax the car that also helps um, actually cleaning the car either with or without putting the cover on or even if you put in the garage is a good idea use a high quality wax if you can if you're going to put a cover on it if you're going to put those heavy cloth cuffs uh, cloth covers um, beware of dust on the car and in the cover because that can scratch the paintwork so sometimes you have to take those covers off and just wash them or you can get a pack of those disposable uh, dust sheet covers and that that's then you can just use them once and then chuck them away so that's quite good um that's one thing to do so uh, like i said wash the car before you put it away and uh, one thing to remember because again we're dealing with this coronavirus situation uh try to leave three days 72 hours before you approach the car if you can to clean it um because that's how long the virus apparently can stay particularly on hard shiny surfaces of course that includes the door handles and stuff like that when you do approach the car you go well, i haven't got the cleaning products but you can use whatever cleaning products you've got make sure there's no bleach in them especially on the interior that will damage the upholstery so you can use like a disinfectant like a toll something like that that'll be fine um, wash the car as you normally would wax it as you normally would make sure you disinfect the door handles interior is more uh, where you need to be careful about disinfecting the car particularly where you know if you've had somebody that may have had coronavirus god forbid or may have symptoms you want to be very careful before you do that make sure you put on a mask uh, gloves uh, goggles if you have them an apron as well just to protect yourselves um, once you're inside the car, uh, make sure you clean all of the high frequency touch points such as the steering wheel, the indicator stalks, the shifter, and then also all the controls on the dashboard. People touch those, even the vents because people twiddle around with those as well. The seat controls to move the seats back and forth and clean all the storage areas, the cubby holes, the glove boxes, the, the cup holders. All of that needs to be clean. 
and also then wipe down the seats themselves. Again, leave the windows open whilst you're doing this because of the, the fumes or the disinfectant, but also leave them open a little while afterwards to let everything dry up. Also clean the keys and the ignition barrel because that's where your hand touches the ignition barrel. If you've got a start button, make sure you clean that as well and um, also the seat belt pull the seat belt all the way out clean the seat belt and clean the buckle because that's touched a lot as well um, uh, so that's pretty much what you have to do uh, with the car um, but like I said use it as much as possible clean it if you can be very very careful look after yourself stay safe stay at home don't go out unless it's for essential journeys and uh, make sure you're subscribing to my channel make sure you follow me on hashtag brown car guy and I hope to see you again soon in another video